Hello everyone. Uh, when I was a kid, uh, I always wanted to grow up, uh, grow up and be a millionaire. And uh, even as an adult, that would be that would be great, a uh, great goal as well. And so I got to thinking, what what is the real definition of a millionaire? Um, and I'll give you a couple choices. So if you're like a celebrity and you make 15 million a year and you spend it all on cars and houses and drugs and parties and God knows what. Um, are you a millionaire in that case, if you kind of spend all the money that you earn? Or if somebody, you know, makes 75000 a year and saves 10 of that every year, and I don't know if the math works out, but saves a lot of that every year and accumulates it, and by the time she retires, she has a million dollars in her bank account. Is she a millionaire? So which, which one would it be? The celebrity that makes more than a million but spends it all and has zero in uh, his bank account at the end of every year? Or the saver that accumulates it and has a million dollars at uh, retirement? Well, it's a good question. I don't know if it's uh, defined, uh, defined anywhere, but um, when you talk about some metrics, sometimes there's three different metrics under the covers. And it's, it's one way to think about this is using our stock and flow uh, concepts that we reviewed. So let me draw this. So you have uh, something that accumulates, which is your stock. So this is the money in your bank account. And then you have an inflow. So the inflow for personal finance is your salary or your earnings. And then you have your, an outflow, which is your spending. So in the case of the celebrity, there's 15 million that comes in. 15 million that goes out, and zero really accumulates. In the case of the saver, there's 75 that goes in, 65 that goes out, and money accumulates year over year in, uh, in a bank account or some kind of uh, savings plan. So sometimes when you're talking about a metric like how much money do you have, that sort of thing, there's really three metrics under the covers, and I call these I and O metrics. So I, I for inflow. N, usually this is counting something like number of customers, number of products, number of employees, amount of money that's accumulated, those sorts of things. Uh, and then O is an outflow. So it's also a medical a hospital term to do intake and outtake of, uh, of fluids. But for us, it's an I and O metric, and it's really three different variables underneath the, the covers. So in the definition of the millionaire, it's really are debating whether it's the salary is the metric that defines a millionaire or the amount that's in the bank account. So I'm, I'm hoping that it's the bank account because I'm pretty sure that's not, uh, that's not going to happen. So, um, so save, that's the way to become a, become a millionaire. But it's important to tease apart these different metrics. So I'll give you uh, one more example um, uh, of this. So I'm in the software business. So we're always dealing with bugs out there in our software out in the field. And being on the management team, I, uh, I'm always looking at reports and, and in meetings where people are presenting uh, data. So this is a common report. It shows by month the number of bugs we had that month. And so I look at reports like this all the time, and you actually can't tell what number of bugs means. So there's a couple different metrics, again, like the money example, that this could mean. And again, let's represent it as a stock and flow diagram to think about this because as you look at the report the number of bugs is going up in this particular product so it's a cause for concern but you really have to understand what exactly is going uh, up to understand uh, what to do about it so looking at this in stock and flow terms as an I and O metric so there's really three metrics here you have the number of open bugs at the end of the month so this could be at the end of January, there were 20 bugs. At the end of February, there were 24 open bugs. It could be the number of bugs that came in that month, so the number of new bugs that were reported by customers. Or it could be the number of bugs that were closed by the development team that were fixed. Okay? So, and these three metrics tell you three different things. The number of new bugs gives you a sense for how buggy your product is out in the field, how customers are experiencing it. The number of closed bugs tells you how productive your team really is. So at closing and fixing, fixing bugs, regardless of how buggy your product is. And the number of open is really comparing whether you're treading water 
as a team, are you able to keep up with the incoming rate of bugs? Are you able to get ahead or are you falling, falling behind? So depending on what this actually is, it might be a problem in team productivity, it might be a problem with the product out in the field, or it just might be a mismatch between the team size and the, and the number of bugs coming in from the field. So uh, I'm going to pause the camera and I'll show you the way I like to see this stuff uh, displayed. Okay, so first of all, the table should display all three metrics, the I, the N, and the O. So I'll just do that real quick. So you have the number of new, the number of closed, and the number of open at the end of the month. And, in this case, the numbers were actually 198, 20, 26, 24. So what the team was displaying, what I was displaying was the number of open bugs at the end of the month. So if you tease it apart, you can actually analyze each one separately. Is the product getting buggier in the field? No. You can see the number of new bugs is not rising. Is the uh, number of, is the team just as productive? Uh, the answer is uh, no. This is, this is a problem. The team's productivity is going down every month. Therefore, the number of opens is rising. So it's not about the product in the field. It's as much, a, 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 it's about the team productivity in this case. So if you separate out the three metrics, um, you can kind of tell the difference in what to do uh, about it. And then lastly, um, uh, the way uh, I like to see I and O uh, metrics uh, graphed is really uh, in this manner. You can do it a lot of different ways, but a combination of bars for the I and the O, so you can compare this is the incoming, this is the closed by month, and then the, uh, the, num the snapshot, the stock metric, the end metric just as a line so you can see it rising. And sometimes it'll need its own, uh, own axis. So you can also see that the metrics are a little bit different. The stock metric is a metric, it's a point of time metric. So right now, on January 31st, here's our number of bugs. So it's a count, it's, a, it's something that's measured at a point in time. Versus the I and the O are measured over a date range. So number of, we got 100 bugs in this month. We closed 98 in this month. But every day of the month, we might have had a different open count, but at the end of the month, the end of January, we had 20 open. So you can see they're slightly different. So a lot of metrics, when somebody is talking about one number, like number of bugs or amount of money or those sorts of things, there's really a metric trio underneath the covers, this I and O. And so this, the stock and flow uh, diagram is one way to tease it out in your mind that I hope is, is, uh, is helpful to you. This will also become important to distinguish uh, when we do more advanced models, so that's why I wanted to cover it uh, as part of this video series. All right, thanks.